Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forge Delights Forever promotional series. It's 3v3 Pro and Joe ladder action this afternoon for your viewing pleasure going down on this generated map of which we will talk more in just a moment. First of all, you know the deal, we'll give our players some time, we'll allow them to gate him while we make our important introductions starting with Team 1 up here at the top left in the blue corner or the blue corners. It is Scrat or the Blues Corner, that's how I should have said it. Scrat, anyway, going UEF, there he is opening first land. And the other blue to his bottom left down here, going Cyber and Bless him this time in electric blue, it's Narsimka opening first land. And last but not least, 14 1 on the front line, sporting this season's fabulous Vivacious Violet, going Seraphim opening first land. It's the winner of this week's amusing name award, it's Franzibald. There he is, I'll probably be calling him Franz today because it rolls off the tongue better. And he's going second air, how very kind of him to let us know. Uh, so that's team one, comprised of a UEF, a Cybrin and a Seraphim. Checking out Team 2 now, starting at the bottom of the screen in burgundy red, we have Ari Gold going Aeon, our first of the day, opening first land. Uh, next up to his right in Ferrari red, we've got uh, Geneva Checklist. I think if I had an award for an unusual name, he would certainly win for that. Anyway, he's going UEF opening first land and on the front line for Team 2 in Hallib Orange Orange, another Aeon, it's Don Gringo. There he is, which is, uh, isn't that a bit of an oxymoron, Don being a Spanish gentleman and Gringo being a non-Spanish person? Isn't that right? It's a little bit of shameless cultural appropriation going on there. Absolutely savage of him. Anyway, he's going Aeon, as we've said already, opening first land. So two Aeon and a UEF there for Team 2. Game quality at 100%. Would we expect anything less? Well, yes, sometimes we get down to 98, 99 for a team ladder, but not today. Remember, of course, these are ladder ratings, uh, but I did check beforehand, and technically speaking, there are only two Joes today. That is, of course, people below the arbitrary for, uh, 1500 threshold of global ranking, not displayed here, of course. And uh, those two, uh, well, Joes, high level Joes, were Franzibald there and Don Gringo. Everybody else was over the arbitrary 1500. So expect some decent fireworks on display today. What's the map got in store for us today? Well, pretty liberal smattering of mass everywhere. We've got some decent piles of mass poop, some 400s, some 500s. Uh, it's dotted all over really, not too shabby. And then we've got these big concentrations around the central lake here, sort of almost redundant starting locations, if you will. A semi-inaccessible top right corner, only really likely to see any play up there from droppage. So they're going to have to bring build capacity or units up here to make a play for these four mass points. Otherwise, probably going to be a pretty quiet state of affairs up in that top right hand corner but then the bottom left is very much open and of course this big central pond over here don't always end up expecting a decent amount of naval play in the central pond but this is so large and on the doorstep of these two forward bases here whoever controls this could have a decent strategic advantage of their opponents so i expect to see someone make a play for that at least we did have one little bit of lab play coming south there while i was waffling from narsimko who's currently bringing his comm down as we speak in fact we've got comms moving down towards the left hand corner from both sides two comms there from geneva and ari moving to the bottom left and then of course narsimka and potentially franzibald moving in that direction also and who, I wonder, will make a play for the top right, keeping us guessing for the moment. But we have our first naval yards queued up in the centre and then scrapped as soon as I mentioned it. I shouldn't have bothered. Uh, looks like that might have been Narsimka. Yeah, he's the only Cybran on the field. So uh, he's got plans, or at least he had plans, whether or not he revisits them in uh, short order will have to remain to be seen. No naval yards queued up anywhere else that I can see. Uh, look at this. Already got a Selene cloaky cloaky combat scout on the other side of that pond there for Franzibald coming just around. It's not really a pond, is it? It's more of a lake. Pretty substantial. And what is that? Such a transport. We've had some air liftage for Narsimka. Dropped off one engineer down here. And he's discovered a saucy little flare, a little bit of lab play. That will be denied by this well placed mantis there of Narsimka. Well done to him. T1 bomber out. 
Uh, I don't want to say early doors, but it's reasonably early. We're four and a half minutes in now. Uh-oh. But a hostile interceptor belonging to Don Gringo has scouted this transport, but he's not. He's more concerned about this scout plane when that would have done far more damage. Mind you, it would have taken a while for that interceptor to chew through the 500 hit points on board. That transport would have been unlikely to have shot it down. Anyway, we've got four units of build capacity that have made it safely onto the ground there for Franz. And he is getting to work on a couple of land factories and uh, possibly a radar. Yeah, looks like a radar station. Give himself a little bit of intel. Two interceptors tangle above the skies. Looks like that's probably gone better for Franz. Next engage should hand him the mini micro victory on that encounter. There we go. And he's still got that T1 bomber yet to decide to do something with it, however. Now it looks like it might be moving down to this position. There are two engineers on the ground, busily working towards getting the mass extractors up and running, but a nice little bit of defensive maneuvering from Don Gringo keeps them safe from that potential air incursion. One Aurora dropped off on the front line. Looks looking to deny construction of these mass extractors. Two were completed, a third nearly completed. The fourth will have to wait. In fact, all of those might now be destroyed, being as there's very little in the way of defensive units in the area. And now our ACUs finally meet one another in the bottom left-hand corner. Just over the six-minute threshold, Narsimka and Aragold getting into it. Aragold with 9,600 hit points. Narsimga with about 8,700, but he has got some support and a nice little T1 PD. And it's a good thing, too, because he suddenly finds himself going 2v1 as Geneva Checklist comes in from the southeast. But there's more backup arriving for him on the scene. Narsimka is their top-rated player at 1730. And Aragold, top-rated player on Team 2 at 1754. So the two chaps placed either side of the main battlefield are oh, the two players to watch out for. Aragold, though, taking damage early doors. Look at this. Finds himself surrounded by Mantis. Sub-3000 HP into the red. Now Simka continuing to press. Are we going to see an early ejection here? And not of just anybody, but of Team 2's top pro. Lovely little work from Geneva to impede his progress though. Throwing down some disposable T1 P gens just to hamper Nasimka's movement and give Ari Gold the space to withdraw which he is going to do. Only 2,000 hit points left. That was very nearly a very bad outcome for Team 2. Franzibald brings his comm over to that position that was assaulted so rudely a few moments ago by that Aurora. You must have got a, an engineer in here as well because those have been either built or capped. That's an Aeon one, so that was definitely rebuilt. In fact, I think they all have. They were all destroyed and then he got one engineer in there somehow. And Nasimka has brought his attention back to the pond, has one naval yard online already and has queued up a bunch more. We did have some interest from Don Gringo, who's thrown down a naval factory, or at least started work on one. That's 1,400 hit points complete so far, but decaying slowly. Engineers over here, perhaps the ones that were working on that, now working on the land factory. Of course, he's gone Aeon, so he can counter in the short term with some floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty, and get his confused land spam out onto the waters to assault any naval vessels but it's a suboptimal solution much better to get your own navy in play if you can afford to do so but uh, he has not made a play for the top right at all the only play he has made was that one we spoke of over here just a moment ago otherwise Franz has managed to conquer all of this we saw him set up shop early with a couple of land factories he added a third to it next to that radar and then spammed out engineers and t1 spam and now he is in full control of this entire area and there is no way through i believe 
through that little canyon. That is an impassable piece of terrain. Hello, what have we got here? Saucy little drop inbound there from France. Taking some fire, though, from a seeker. But not enough inbound fire to deny these units. He's got what looks to be about four or five Zooies on the ground. He's got a Tham in there. And a couple of anti-air units. Some nice labs in play ready to counter or attempt to counter this, but they're going to need to get their micro on if they're going to inflict some damage. Tham dealt with. And Zooey's all but dealt with. Two more remaining up here, and the labs are still functionally operational as a little squad. Three of them remaining. Lovely play there. That is how you defend, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't have to be costly. It's all about the micro and the movement. So, Scrat's bought a commander into play, but he's getting himself a nano repair. He's already got gun. Let's have a look at what the other ACUs in the area are saying upgrade-wise. Well, Arigold, despite being badly damaged, he didn't take the coward's way out and go for T2 Engineering Suite to get a big bump in HP back and throw down defences. No, no, no. He is sticking with aggression. Has gone for double gun upgrade on that commander. And is out looking for blood. Now Simco got gun. And what have we got for Geneva, who's fleeing the area? Nothing so far. I'd say fleeing is perhaps not the correct term. Being as uh, he hasn't been under any pressure. But Scrat now with gun and nano repair. He's got 50 hit point a second regen on that chassis. 13,500 hit points. And a second player from Team 1 entering the lake. We've now got three operational naval yards in play in that main lake for Franz. This is going to be very, very hard for Team 2 now. And potentially a costly game-losing decision. Don Gringo has already yielded the top right hand corner to Franz and now he's essentially yielded the lake as well without any contestation. Scrat advancing with his comm taking pot shots at civilians who are just going about their daily business, poor things. Gold, just shy of 5,000 hit points now. Regenning slowly at 10 hit point a second. Stealth upgrade on the way for Narsimka. That's, of course, the forerunner on the Cybran chassis these days to his own nano repair upgrade. 50% there. Brings in some Mantis and uses their underutilized engineer function to help assist that. It's not a huge amount of build power on those puppies, but every little helps. 76% done, climbing nicely. He should finish that. Aurigold not coming anywhere quickly in his direction. In a completely clean metaphor there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Thrown me off there a bit. I don't know what I was saying. There we go. Naval Yard T2 upgrade complete for Franz. Some solid air defences. Taking some pot shots at these fighters, but a nice little T2 incursion for Don Gringo. He really needs to shut this down for the longevity of his main base and the health of his teammates in general. There are now frigates coming in from what well, turned out only to be two naval yards were constructed in the end for Narsimka. Back down to the bottom left, Narsimka and Aragol getting into it. Arigold still needs to be careful. Just 4,000 hit points there. Scrat looking very aggressive as he continues to push forward. Geneva checklist throwing down some defences up front. Lovely little overcharge there. Deals with that second point defence and a bunch of the engineers working on it. And that's a sizable force heading his way from Arigold. What can they see on the field? Uh, the intel down here is not brilliant, and I think that might have taken them a bit by surprise. 
There are Blazes, T2 Blazes in the mix here as well, as well as the occasional Obsidian. That's a lot of potential firepower. And of course, all of those units are faster than the Commanders. Scrap drifting in the direction of the lake here. Needs to keep moving. He's down into the yellow. Could find himself in trouble. Three-star Commander, 73 kills and climbing. But down to 7,500 hit points. And he's just standing there absorbing it. There is some T1 relief coming in from his teammate. But it's going to be too little too late. I think our first player out is going to be Scrat. Boom, baby! Down goes Scrat from Team 1. When they were looking so strong at the opening for this. The first team to lose a player inside the 15-minute mark. Ouch. Now Simka going to be taking over all of those units and that infrastructure. Now, after that little victory, Aragold continuing to press. Now Simka does have some T2 units of his own. He's got a bunch of rhinos moving in to support the commander, helping to plug this gap. Aragold still not looking very healthy. I think if you're going to use him offensively at this point, I'd be devoting at least one or two of these engineers to helping to rep that commander up slightly. Because at the moment it's a bit of a liability. How did Don Gringo get on with that little amphibious attack on the shipyards we saw a moment ago? Well, they took down one T1 naval yard. Probably sunk a couple of vessels, maybe. And left with a handful of auroras just taking pot shots at a small pigeon encampment on the cliff edge there. Aeons famously allergic to pigeons and pigeon poo. Meanwhile, infrastructure on the cliff edge just over the edge there for Franzibald seems to be pretty safe. Look at all of this. We've got a little fire base going up on the cliff for Franz. T2 artillery going up under shield coverage. That's the range on that bad boy. Can be turned on these factories down here at a moment's notice. Tons of vulnerable engineers down here. Nice little tack missile battery though. Two silos sitting in that little basin going after the T2 naval yard and that is a successful strike almost manages to take that naval yard down but a next volley should do it oh if he doesn't change target that is I think he was expecting two tack missiles to get the job done there or maybe he saw a Opportunity to smash some T2 mexes. Franz on 144. Don Gringo on 70. Team Eco-wise, Team 2 are actually ahead. 369 versus 330. Despite all of this territory being in Team 1's hands. Checking out what's going on with the comms in the bottom left though. Aragold on the assault once more. Still looking very much at the same level of health he's been for the last... Five minutes or so, although maybe a thousand or two more, especially after that recent rack in veterans. He's back up to 7,400 now, but still only at about 50% health. Now Simka on 12,000, two star commander. Aragold back down below 5k again and finds himself in retreat. Could he have overcooked it here? Simka not wanting to pursue. That's, uh, well, I suppose there is a, but again, partially damaged. I don't know. That might have been an opportunity there for Narsimka to eject Ari. And he'd get Ari out of the picture if he can manage to stay in himself. That really does put a solid, solid few points on Team 1 score sheet. Would have been their game to lose. This is an interesting little graphical change. The volcano launching those countermeasures into the air, now zapping 
the inbound cruise missiles and drawing them towards I actually quite like that. Nice little addition, you see? Wouldn't see that if you were purely playing on Steam. All these little things that keep happening in-game. Little, little adjustments, new little things keep getting added. You're missing out on it all if you're sticking with the Steam version. Do come and check us out at faforever.com. It's the only place to play this game. You do actually have to have it on Steam first of all, of course. I should preface with that. That's where you buy the game. But the multiplayer client where we hang out and where this community operates from. faforever.com. Anyway, back to the game. As we close in on 20 minutes. 4-4-4 four, four, four for Team 2 in generative mass. 3-90 for Team 1. Difference in total mass accrued of about 22. 24 mass per tick. Something in that region. 24 mass per tick. Sorry, 24k mass uh, generated and reclaimed so far. Reclaim wise, Team 2 faring much, much better. They're up 11k on the reclaim side of things. Starting to see the emergence of some T3 units now. First one spotted by yours truly is from Aragold's team. Doesn't mean it's the first one on the field. And this little basin for Don Gringo. Location, of course, of that attack missile battery is now facing some pressure. We've got a line of frigates which might get obliterated by a combination of these blazers and point defense but behind them we've already got three of those pesky seraphim cruisers launching missiles inbound those volcanoes we were alluding to earlier sort of no not keeping up with things at all <laughs> I was about to say sort of keeping up with the inbound fire but no too many of them taken offline, and now it looks like that basin might be lost for Don Gringo, which means he is literally operating off this little patch of ground here. And has to worry about drops coming in over that cliff. This little fire base, where it's uh, getting more artillery added to it as time goes by, and of course the threat that's coming across the water. Another blaze attack, this time on Narsimka's naval yards, which are still operational, and he's actually gone for T2 as well. So we've got some Cybran cruisers in the mix. Down goes the T1 shipyards. Crucially, the T2 is still operational, and the blazes find themselves floating to the bottom of that lake. It's a nice little group of Harbingers advancing in the west for Ari. Now Simka needs to be a smidge careful here. It's commander close to this group of spam. There's not much in the way of defences here and very little in the way of ground-based firepower. But we have some broadswords coming in from what was Scrat's old base in the north. It says thanks for the UEF tech. Gratefully received. I will put it to good use. Can't bring them to bear fully, though. Very concerned about this horde of ASFs for Geneva. Geneva rocking about 59 ASFs on the field at the moment. Now, Simka does have his own group of fighters, but he's on 44. Can't be sure of the aerial win, and so he's going to hold back and wait for a better potential engagement and that will cost him that southern outpost and three mexes as a result Asimka just going to back all the way up with his commander back towards his original base but this is not great the proximity of the shoreline of this coast to this main base you park these cruisers anywhere along the shoreline they're going to be able to hit all of this just to give you an illustration that outer yellow line 
is the radius a range of that uh, cruiser. That's totally not right as well. I said the outer, but that's uh, actually a circumference. The radius is that, of course. I know, I went to school, thank you very much, but you know what I mean. That's its range, that's what I should have said. They both began with R, leave me alone. Nice little snipe there from Geneva. Sees a couple of gunships come in from Franz, who's trying to help his teammate, but uh, should have taken a leaf out of his book, what he did with his own gunships and brought them back. There was no real way to engage there. Now Geneva looking like he's splitting some production at least and siphoning it off into torpedo bomber production. Probably a little concerned about what's happening on the lake. Artillery, whilst useful, not always accurate. Can take a while to land those shots. Oh my god! <laughs> Firing everywhere except the target by the looks of things. Seraphim artillery. See if this one lands anywhere near anything. Nope! <laughs> Seraphim artillery! To do with having its firing randomness reduced potentially. Nice little advance from Ari. Completely muted as it reaches the main base. It's a good thing too because that is the forward land HQ for Narsimka. He's at T3. He's managed to churn out a handful of bricks and throw down five units of Cerberus turrets, or maybe six, two of which has been destroyed. But it has repelled that attack. Can the presence of those bricks provide enough of a buffer that Narsimka can reclaim this little outpost down here in the west? Over time, we're just getting more and more cruisers building up in the lake. Geneva finds an opportunity to take down one of Narsimka's cruisers. Two of them, in fact. Lower hanging fruit than going after the cruisers in the center belonging to France. That would just be too much flak. He would lose all of those torpedo bombers in one pass, might bag himself one or two kills and it won't make a huge dent but this way he's managed to hold on to the rest of those bombers lots and lots of buzz kills going down or being placed in the southwest region of their front line see them drawing some fire on this next bombing run. Looks like they're going after some of the destroyers out to the east. That's a fantastic bombing run. Three destroyers down on that engagement. Caught the cruisers when they drifted off further to the southwest. Is he going to continue with this play? He's still producing torpedo bombers. May just feel like it's a cost he's willing to bear at the moment. And why not? Because look at the difference between team... This is outrageous. I suppose they've got the entirety of the bottom left-hand corner, which completely counteracts what's in the top right. I can't remember which... Well, there are only four or so mexes up here, I think. So there's potentially a lot more mexes down here. So that might explain some of the discrepancy, but it's almost, there's like 250 mass differential between these two teams now in favour of Team 2, which is very surprising. It's a lot of eco, and the longer this game goes on, the harder it's going to be to keep that at bay. Aragold's amassed a decent force over in the west, but the number of bricks defending that approach is growing also.
We're up to almost 100 air superiority fighters now for Narsimka. Geneva at 145, so you can start to see the effect this mismatch in Eco is having. Team 2 starting to outproduce their opponents. Don Gringo's base, though, I'm sorry to say, I don't see him playing much of a role in this game for too long. Those volcanoes just about managing to keep up with the deluge of inbound cruise missile fire. And we're only seeing more and more cruisers emerge over time. And not just cruisers. We've now transitioned to T3 Navy. And of course all the volcanoes and buzz kills in the world won't be able to keep the battleship's artillery out. Lovely little drop in the top right corner from Franz, or from the top right hand corner, down the eastern approaches. Sensing he's got Don Gringo on the ropes. Sends some zooies down here, finds a little mass fab farm belonging to Geneva, takes care of that. Wants to finish off the T3 mechs as well. This will go some way to redress the eco advantage Team 2 have been enjoying. An absolutely crucial maneuver for Team 1. Hastily constructed group of T2 gunships dispatched to quell this little uprising. Loses another T3 mechs. Damage inflicted. Look at all of the redundant mass points up here now. Oh, but look at the assault that's underway on Narsimka's base at the same time. We've got the broadswords out defending. Where are the ASFs? They're all loitering back at base. Geneva should have them up here, really, assisting with this assault. But it's not going to break this position. Now Simka's got too many bricks in here. His comm also in play and faring rather well for the time being. Dropping into the yellow slightly. We've got a handful of blazes down here. But as soon as the bricks turn their attention to them, they get completely vaporized. And that attack peters out dramatically. More units moving up all the time. And crucially, the Monkey Lord that was under construction survives. And survives with a decent amount of health. I can't remember how much of that production was completed. But it's sitting there with about 60% of its health. Devs, if you're watching, Jip. Useful little thing for casters would be to see a little indicator in the bottom left-hand tooltip. Telling us how far production is along on a partially constructed unit. That would be good to know for those situations. They're always asking the casters what they think, how they can improve the game. Improve the uh, casting experience. God, how many cruisers are we up to? 19 cruisers down there now. And... A ruddy great battleship bombarding Don Gringo's base. There's so many volcanoes here. 30 tactical missile defences. How many cruisers did he lose in that little torpedo bomber raid? None. Absolutely none. Still at 19. Might have lost one and then had it replenished. Hard to say. But now the bricks are on the move for Narsimka, pushing back finally on that western approach. Eco-wise, Team 2 still up some 40 mass? 40 mass per tick. ASF's about to dance and tangle in the bottom left. That still looks like it might be an advantage numerically for Geneva. The engage is pretty even. Missed opportunity there. Could have got in behind them. The idea, of course, from Narsimka. Drag those fighters 
above the AA off the cruisers, which he nearly did there for a moment. Geneva thought, nah, maybe not. Maybe not the most sensible of plans. Now we're even getting some Seraphim floaty coming in to harass this base. But this position is done. No way to hit out at those battleships. Have a look at the range on said battleships. The whole base is in range. It's not even right on the shoreline. We've now got four battleships there as well. This is not looking great right here. Oh, what have we got back here? So we've got a Novak satellite. We've got a nuke launcher. It's been spied by Narsimka. Narsimka is also getting spied on by Geneva. So both teams having a good look at what they've got. I am dead, team. I should not have lost the pond. You lost pond and top, said Geneva. Yeah, it hasn't gone well, but uh, Don Gringo is the lowest rated player in the game, so don't judge him too harshly. But he didn't really even contest that pond or the top right hand corner. It was, it did seem like it was a choice. <coughs> GC now fronting the next attack in the west from Ari. And just as he turns up at the main base, a megalith completes. The Monkey Lord that we were looking at earlier was completed. And with its regen, got to full health before this attack started. But yeah, that GC not going to fare well. Another attack is muted. Novak Satellite. Moving up towards the top left-hand corner. How far are we off that nuke launch? Not far at all. That looks to be about four-fifths done, maybe more. Novak satellite heading up to what is a rather undefended, unshielded power grid belonging to Narsimka. In Scrat's old base, and that's a control K from Gringo. Well could potentially have been a barrage from a battleship but uh, either way he was effectively out of the game so we won't concern ourselves too much with his exit doesn't materially impact the game too much at this point but this is dreadful detected. for the team that have been behind on eco the entire game this is not good can this nuke redress the balance? I mean, if it had turned up earlier, I would have gone over here and killed off these production facilities. But now, I mean, you're not going to get back in the pond. It looks like he might be heading this direction. We do have strategic missile defense. If it goes long, it might get caught. And indeed it does. It was going long. Looks like it was meant to head up here. is lurking over here in the power grid if he's paying attention can reduce the volatility of course with a reclaim function needs to get more shield gens up is what he needs commander at the top left of the screen but look at this that megalith and the monkey lord and all its bricks going strong covered very comfortably by a whole bunch of bouncers and bangers. T2 and T3 flak in play. Guarding against just this sort of eventuality. That's a healthy amount of broadswords that Geneva has managed to amass. He's got 17 broadswords there. Is that what he's producing? It is. So he's going to have another wave of broadswords coming off before too long. looking on ASF numbers. 180 for Geneva. 
Now Simka at 101. You see, that would concern me greatly. Ari's flank under heavy attack has got a GC in play. But Harry has got no way to hit back at range. Everything's going to come in here. Prioritize the Colossus. And despite the 100,000 hit point tank, that thing's not going to last too long. If it's lucky, it might bag the Monkey Lord. The Monkey Lord actually gets the final blow, which gives it a little bit more longevity as it accrues a rank in vet. But what's happening here? While all that's going on, the broadswords are sent to attack the top right. Looks like he has completed another round of production. He's got 32 broadswords now. That is a lot of damage from the skies. Now Simka's got his planes landed. Should probably be concerned about this. He's focusing perhaps more on what's going on down here. Not hip to the threat that's coming his way airily. And Van Franz for sitting right back, back here. Vulnerably standing next to a PGM, which is never a good idea. But they've found the comm. They've locked onto it. He's going down. There's some T3 Sams down here taking pot shots at the broadswords. Narsimka making a play over here for shield coverage. How's the anti-air in the main base? Well, the answer is not great. And now the Novak satellite has spotted the commander. They're not wasting any time. They're going straight for the comm. So cheesy. He says, and that's it. That's a win for Team 2 with a solid air snipe. Wow. But no other way. I mean, oof. is it really cheese? I always feel like cheese is a thing that happens at the beginning of a game. It's supposed to be an all-or-nothing play, an all-in right at the beginning of the game. Is it really cheese at 40 minutes? You won air. I mean, it surprises me that Nasimka, Nasimka didn't engage on the air front when all of this was going down I think he didn't see it I think he was focused down here and he just didn't recognize the threat he thought okay well there's an attack in the top right I've got some time and maybe didn't expect it to come in here after Franz but that was basically an open goal where are the, the there must have been an air battle I can't see any ASFs on the field at all for Narsimka so they did duel. I think they must have dueled over here after the demise of Franz. Nasimka would have reacted. And that's when Geneva's fighters would have come in to help defend those. But it just took no time at all for those broadswords, which are very, very tanky gunships. 6,000 hit points apiece. They do tons of damage. Took no time for them at all just to breeze in here and catch a comm that was, frankly, undefended. So well done, Team 2. Um, oh, MVP. I don't know. Answers in the comment section below, guys. And while you're down there, smash the old like button, for goodness sake. It does wonders for my hairline, my ego. Maybe my wife will uh, spend more time snuggling if I get enough likes. Probably not. Probably not, alas. 40 years old is, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> 40, 42. I'm 42 in a couple of weeks, guys. Help me turn back the clock with all the information I have now. I'd buy Bitcoin at 20 cents. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it, guys. There's always more to come from me in the future. If you like it and you would like to see more and you've seen everything else, or indeed you just want to support me, do check out the Patreon links in the description below. Uh, it's a mere dollar a month for the basic tier. That gets you all of the casts. They're ad-free. There's got 104 premium content casts ready there for your viewing pleasure with more being added all the time. So look forward to seeing all of you. Thank you so much for your time and until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.